Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to the NSOIL Allergy Info Session. My name is Camille Newsom. I'm the Director of Grower Support and Education at Enlightened Soil Core. Thanks for being here today. So we grow NSOIL algae, which is a live cell concentration of chlorella vulgaris. Chlorella vulgaris is a micro green freshwater algae. It exists in ecosystems all over the world and has been used in agriculture production for crop improvement and stress adaptation and nutrition for a long time. The algae is grown in photobioreactors. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, currently we have labs in South Carolina and Florida that are producing the algae. I want to briefly go over this table comparing live cell and soil algae with other products that you may have seen on the market, seaweed, algal extracts, or kelp products. Um, and soil algae is not a broth or an extract or a growth medium. It's actually the concentration of live cells. And that's really what sets us apart. So all of these products contain phytohormones, but the availability of those phytohormones differs. With N-soil algae, the availability is extended. They're available for a long period of time in the soil, whereas with the extracts, it's really a single dose of the phytohormones. It's a brief availability. All of these products can help improve nutrient cycling in some ways, but the N-soil algae with the live cells actively participates in that process. It helps improve the long-term fertility storage in the system, and it's an endophyte, which means that it can be taken in by the plant, whereas the extracts do not have that kind of active participation in the system. The other biggest difference is the application frequency. So N-soil can be applied one to four times per season and have great benefits, whereas the extracts are typically recommended for application every two to four weeks for best results. The benefits we see from N-soil algae are, are in five categories. So the first is uh, soil biodiversity, microbial activity, another way to say that is functionality. Um, we see when we do soil testing increases in the microbial populations, the biomass, the diversity, and then the food sources for those microorganisms, the water extractable organic carbon and nitrogen, the soil organic matter, which is really the structure, the house for these organisms, and their respiration, their activity level. We also see an enhancement in chlorophyll, the, the green pigment that's found in plant leaves. We see an improvement in photosynthetic capacity. With stress adaptation, there are improvements in biotic and abiotic stress. So plants can be um, privy to biotic stress like a pathogen pressure or a fungal pressure. Um, and when in soil algae is applied, the agents that protect that plant from those pressures are improved. With abiotic stress, things like drought or salinity or heat, um, that's an oxidative stress. And the plants produce antioxidants in response to that oxidative stress. So when N-soil algae is applied, it boosts that antioxidant production and it's protecting that plant and helping it adapt to those stressful conditions. When it comes to water, N-soil algae has shown improvements for water retention and really being able to hold that water in the soil through porosity and structure improvement. And then an infiltration capacity improvement, allowing for less compaction and more airflow to, to be able to actually move that water through the pockets in the soil. Finally, the nutrition availability and density and uptake are improved as a benefit. We see a relationship between the nutrient becoming bioavailable, whether that's fixing nitrogen or solubilizing phosphorus or potassium, and then the uptake into the plant, which then turns out into this density that's found in the plant tissue of that nutrient. So from a high level, N-soil algae works sort of in this cycle. The, the soil microbes are stimulated when the algae is applied. The plants attract those soil microbes and there's an availability of nutrient that increases. Those microbes are converting those nutrients to the compounds needed by the plants. And during photosynthesis, the plants convert atmospheric carbon dioxide into these carbon-based sugars so the plant can grow, which brings more carbon into the soil. The algae increases the chlorophyll and the photosynthetic capacity in plants. And then because of this, we see an improvement in yield, in nutrient cycling, and in microbial activity in the soil. This is quite high level, though. On a more micro level, literally, these images come from Dr. James White at Rutgers University. 
And what happens here, and this is at the soil level, at the root level, is the algae are applied and there's a stimulation that occurs where the roots release exudates that attract the soil bacteria, the soil microorganisms to the plant. The algae then get surrounded by, in this case, the bacteria, and the bacteria actually enter the algae cells. And so here we like to use a metaphor of a bus. So the algae cell is acting like this bus, this transportation vehicle, and the bacteria are, are getting on the bus. They're going inside of the algae cell, filling it up. And then the algae cell actually enters, enters the plant root hair and it's releasing this bacteria, the chlorophyll from that algae is being absorbed by the plant. And then the root hair becomes filled with this bacteria, this, this sort of chlorophyll absorption. And this is called rhizophagy. So Dr. James White says that in a sense, this algae has become a sort of type of hidden cover crop in soil and around plants, providing these plants with this continuous supply of bacteria for the rhizophagy cycle. Um, the purpose of cover crops, you know, all, all cover crops are providing microbes and endophytes to the, the crop plants. And the difference here is that the algae is doing this uh, right at the root tip of the plant where the endophyte is delivered. So this could be a really great way to achieve healthy soil and, and fertilize crops in a sustainable way. So we're often asked about this difference, going back to that table of how live cells differ from commercial broth. Um, in this image, we can see, you know, a, a root hair growth improvement, a chlorophyll absorption improvement. Um, but the key difference here is the active, the active participation of the live cells in the soil ecosystem as these kind of transport vehicles for the microbes, for the chlorophyll, for nutrients. And uh, broths do not contain any live cells. They're, they're only containing the phytohormones. <clears throat> So some key examples from the field, um, I'll show a variety of crops here. This first image is from a grower in Iowa um, on corn, 80 acres. I love this image because we can see exactly where the algae was sprayed and we can see exactly where the yield gain was. So this grower got between 40 to 50 bushel per acre increase um, in the strips where the algae was sprayed. Two applications, the first one was about a month pre-planting with an herbicide and the second was around V4. In Montana on native grass hay, alfalfa, um, this grower was looking at animal performance as well. So on the left-hand side, we see hay bales that were treated um, with algae. The bottom are a little bit greener. Um, they also were heavier. He could only pick one of those up with the tractor, whereas the, the top two layers are a little bit browner in color. Um, and those were a little bit lighter. He could pick two of those up. Um, on the right hand side, uh, we see some animal performance measurements. So he noticed the heifers were fatter, fleshier, shinier coats, they were cycling better. Over the last couple of years, his conceptions rates have increased by about seven to nine percent across his herd. And most fascinatingly to me, the, the mineral consumption, the supplemental mineral consumption on the ranch has decreased over 90 percent. So his cows are choosing to not um, eat the mineral, and this this rancher attributes that to the improved nutrition that's that's in the hay, in the forage, and the alfalfa. A citrus grower we work with down in Georgia and Florida, um, he's been looking at a, a regenerative program versus a conventional program, and looking at the phytonutrient uh, content in his fruit. So his results have shown between 10 and 39 times more nutrient value in the regeneratively grown fruit than the, the fruit that's grown with the fertilizer. Um, and I love this image. It, it really speaks for itself here. With vegetables in Georgia, we did a pepper trial, um, huge yield gain and ROI gain here, 5,908 pounds per acre and a $4,000 per acre ROI increase. Um, with the fertility reduction on squash in South Carolina, we saw the, <clears throat> the sort of winning combination was 25% of the usual fertilizer input plus this foliar application of algae and that, that got the grower to a 46% increase in the crop weight. On alfalfa in Minnesota, um, this was a feed test to look at the protein, the value, the quality, and the total digestible nutrients. We saw improvements across the board here, um, in addition to uh, taller and, and more, more bushy alfalfa. And then with sorghum, we saw um, that in soil algae, this is a grower in Kansas, that it allowed the grower to gain one and a half tons per acre 
by reducing fertilizer 45%. Um, the year before this, it was a 30% reduction in fertilizer. So he's been doing a gradual transition here. When it comes to application and soil algae is really compatible with all standard irrigation equipment and in all tank mixes, um, we have growers that mix this with a variety of inputs and, and apply it in a variety of ways through a, a sprayer, a pivot, a drone, drip irrigation, jet, micro jet injection, um, backpack sprayer, etc. Uh, the rate is eight ounces per acre, and for smaller scale application, it's about five milliliters of end soil per gallon of water. We always get asked about timing, and our team really likes to focus on a highly consultative approach to this. So we want to work with growers. We want to work with you to be able to integrate this in the best way that's easiest for you and will we'll give you the most profitability in your system. Um, that being said, over our years of testing, we've found that for corn and soybeans, three applications, the first one being in furrow and then two foliars throughout the season are really effective for vegetables um, starting at seed post-emergence, and then one or two applications, flower, fruit, whether there's a cover crop at the end of the season, possibly uh, before a stressor event. With pasture and hay and, and alfalfa, uh, we often see three to four times a season after each cutting or grazing is really effective if that works in your system. Um, we do have some growers that are just doing one or two applications and seeing benefits. Um, so really it's about integrating it into whatever you're doing right now, the best, the best way that we can support you. Thank you all for being here for today's info session. Um, this QR code goes to our growers report. If you would like to scan that, there's lots of information there. Please reach out to us at info at nsoilalgae.com. Um, you can call or text the phone number here, and we appreciate you being a part of our community.